Hey, what's up guys? So in today's video, we're going to talk about making a patio table with pretty basic tools. So you see so many guys on YouTube, there are these woodworking channels where they have like tons of different equipment. So they, they, make, they make like, you know, pretty basic stuff, uh, but, you know, they end up using like thousands upon thousands worth of equipment, you know, like band saws, table saws, all sorts of jigs and fancy stuff. So the idea behind this video is I just wanted to share a design for making a small patio table that doesn't involve all of those expensive tools. Basically, all you need for this is simple tools like that most uh, people even starting out doing any sort of uh, work with timber may have lying around. So we'll use something, some stuff like a circular saw, we'll use a, a hand saw. We'll use a straight edge, which will allow us to cut straight. Um, and, you know, you, you can basically make this without even having a workbench. You can do this outside, like I've done in this video, where um, I actually just got a few concrete blocks and propped up my timber on that. So I'll just cut to a picture of what this table looks like, and then we'll switch back to the plans for this table. Um, so here's what the table looks like. And to build the frame, we're actually going to build the frame first and then talk about the tabletop after that. So the frame itself is basically made up of two crisscrossing pieces at the bottom, two crisscrossing pieces at the top. These both um, interlock with each other. Uh, so there's going to be two of these, two of these, and then two uprights. And what I like about this design is that it, it's pretty simple in that one size of timber can be used for both of these pieces here and then we'll just cut it to shape as we need and then for the upright we need to buy another type of timber that's five centimeters wide and 3.5 centimeters deep uh, and we're going to cut that to 64 centimeter lengths so in terms of dimensions here the first two cuts that we're going to have to do we're going to have to cut our timber we're going to have to do two cuts of 80 centimeters two cuts of 66 centimeters and then two cuts of 64 centimeters for these three pieces. For these two uprights, you don't need to do anything with these. They, you basically just bolt them on. Um, you can do fancier stuff if you have a wood router. You can do some fancy stuff with it. If you don't, it doesn't make much difference. It's really just how fancy you want to get. These two guys here, then we're going to we're going to mark these up with some dimensions. So. For this guy here, there's a triangular cut that we have to make that's 9 centimeters by 24. There's another dimension here that we have to mark off in order to get rid of this waste here. So we come in 12 centimeters, we then come in 22, and then we come up 4 centimeters. We mark that off. Then we do the same dimensions on this side, mark that off again, and we draw our line in between here. And it's as simple as that, some pretty, pretty simple stuff here. Then for this one, it's even simpler again. We mark off one dimension, which is 22 centimeters. We draw a line between the corner of the piece and then this mark here, and then we chop it off with a circular saw. So it's pretty straightforward. The idea being, you know, you don't need all of the fancy equipment to do this type of stuff. You know, I know that in the US and even here in Ireland and the UK, you know, we can get a circular saw these days from like a cheapo manufacturer for, for not that much money. In fact, we have a, a local grocery shop here called uh, Lidl that sells a lot of equipment, uh, like tools and that type of stuff. And it's the running joke is that a lot of people go in there for like a, to buy milk and bread and stuff and they come out with power tools. So it's a, it's a happy accident if, if you come out with some power tools. Sometimes you can make some project like this. So enough chat, let's just talk about the actual build and we'll talk about marking up the timber and actually making those cuts. Okay, so I'm just marking up my timber now, uh, just going by our plans earlier. So I have to come in 12 centimeters and then 22 and then I have to come up an inch and join those. So let's mark this out. So I'm coming in 12. Then I'm coming in 22 which is here. So with the 22 inch mark lined up then, I'm just gonna make a vertical line from there. So this speed square is actually in inches, so I'm gonna mark it off then in centimeters. Um, 
which is around four centimeters. I think that's pretty nearly nearly an inch and a half, basically very close to an inch and a half, slightly more. So we've got those three marked out. Then we have to join those. So this is the twelve centimeter mark lined up to that mark, and that gives us our other cut line here up to this position. So we'll just do the same on the other side. Um, that will give us a piece then. So all of this material then will be waste and be cut out. And this will be the bit of the, the leg that will be in contact with the ground. So this is the first cut I'm going to make here, which is going to be a plunge cut using a circular saw. And what you do is you line up the zero mark at the front of the saw with your line. And then you just drop the blade down until it sinks down into the timber. Once it's sank down fully and the guide on the circular saw is flat against the timber, you can start to push the circular saw forward. And you'll notice as I'm doing this, I'm actually sitting perpendicular to the saw so that I can line out the direction of the blade by just looking across it there uh, from top. I'll just continue to do out the rest of the cuts here. That's the triangular piece that needs taken away on both sides. We'll just use our saw again to cut that. And I'll use the handsaw then to finish off the cuts um, where the circular saw wasn't able to get right in there. With all the cuts made now you can start to see the leg taking shape and we'll want to make two of these so you can just use this one now to transfer your measurements across to the second. For the half lap we'll use the actual width of the timber itself to guide us as to what the width should be. In this case it's in and around about 20 uh, millimeters or so or 10, uh, 10 centimeters either side of the center line. So we'll just mark that up, go down halfway on the timber and we'll do that for both pieces. So we'll mark this one facing down, so we'll t remove the material facing down and then we'll do the opposite on the other corresponding piece where we'll remove the material facing up and that will allow us to do our cross uh, half lap. These two pieces of timber here are going to support the tabletop and there's only one dimension needed here to uh, mark these out. So we mark out that dimension and then we join it to the corner of the board and then we'll do our circular saw cuts. We'll also mark out these two pieces with the half lap as well using the same method and we'll transfer those measurements across to the back side of the board as well which just makes it easier when if you're using a handsaw it makes it sort of slightly more accurate if you can transfer the measurements to the back of the board as well.
Then we'll start to cut out our half laps. So we just follow the two lines that we made either side of the board and try and cut those as straight as possible down to the line that is marks halfway down the board. You can see here that I, I sort of cheated here and used a workbench that I had lying around, but you don't really need a workbench to do this. You could do this just on the ground as well. Then we'll take a chisel to knock out the half lap. Just give it a few knocks there and it should pop right out. And then you might want to clean up that area a little bit too. If it's slightly off at the back side, you can take the chisel and clean it up. And just make sure that it's nice and flush in there for the other board to mate with it. Now it's time to glue up the two pieces together that make the base and we'll just get some wood glue here and just kind of try and apply it evenly inside the joint. For this joint we're actually going to use a small shim as well. Uh, my measurements were slightly loose in this joint, slightly looser than I normally would make them. And uh, just to tighten that up a little bit I am also going to use a shim for that. So you'll see that I, once I've glued it in and push the two bits together. What I'll do is I'll take the shim, stick some wood glue in it as well and hammer it in and then cut it off to size. We'll do exactly the same then for the tabletop support. We'll just interlock the two pieces of timber and then we'll glue them up and get them fixed in place.
Now we'll move on to cutting the uprights again using the circular saw. We can use the speed square to actually guide the saw to keep it square as we're cutting these uprights. We, we actually only need two of these so pretty straightforward to cut. Just mark one and then use the one that you cut then just to mark up the second one. Now it's time to start the assembly, so we will attach the upright timbers to the base. As you can see there, I've used a clamp, but it's not necessarily uh, needed. You know, you don't need a clamp to be able to do this. If you can get somebody to try and uh, hold it upright for you, or the other option would be um, just put the two screws into the upright first, get them started until they're just about protruding, and then just finish them off uh, while you hold the upright in place. So I've used a spirit level here just to try and get the uprights relatively um, level in terms of the vertical uh, placement. So I'm just using wood screws there and then for the, the top bit of the frame that the uprights have to go into I'm using the same method. I'm just pre-drilling and then using wood screws then to attach those. Now with the uprights installed and two screws in from one side, I'm going to drill the opposite side then as well and put a screw in the back as well just to hold it tight in the opposite direction. So we'll pre-drill pre these again just to try and stop the timber from cracking, made as well, and then we'll stick a screw in from behind as well. Now you can see the frame starting to take shape, you can actually sand it down a bit so you can either use an electric sander for that or you can just take a block of wood and wrap some sandpaper around it, both will uh, do just fine. Then for the tabletop what I've done in this case is I've actually got some lengths of timber and glued them and then just compressed them together using some sash clamps just to hold them tight and added some weight on top as well. If you don't want to do this you could also use a solid plywood top and just cut it to whatever shape you want. In this case I've taken that solid top that I've made using individual lengths and then I've shaped it into a circular shape using a jigsaw. And then if you want to finish it off even more nicely you could also look at using a router and some router bits if you want but it's optional. But it does leave it a nice uh, rounded finished edge on the tabletop if you have the luxury of having access to a wood router. If you have any comments about this build guys please just drop me a comment down below and I might be able to help answer any questions you might have. Then once the table is assembled together 
what we'll do is to hold the tabletop to the actual frame what we're going to use is small plastic blocks that you can get out of most hardware shops and then you just screw those into both the top and the bottom that will hold the two pieces together okay guys so that wraps it up that's the patio table all finished so the only thing that we need to do now is just to stain it up with some uh, wood stain or decking stain in that case I had some decking stain lying around already so I just used that that uh, brought it up pretty well with two or three coats so if you thought the video was useful please consider hitting the like and subscribe button and as always if you have any comments or questions just drop me a line down below and I'll try and answer them thanks for watching and catch you in the next video